above, standards one to seven, and you could spit out uh, quick as anything. Those standards are what governs all of the initial teacher education degrees nowadays. So it's with that common understanding that the, each jurisdiction uh, should recognise the qualifications from um, each other's jurisdictions. However, having said that, they are within their rights and I would keep, if I was you, the original documentation, so a paper-based and an electronic copy. So you can scan your um, documents of your transcript from here and your certificate. So make sure you've got a couple of copies, certified copies for the JP and all those kinds of things for the times when a jurisdiction, another provider will ask you for it. Or if you want to come on for further studies, um, remember to join the alumni of UC, but um, to keep in the loop about what's on offer here. But if you want to go and do further studies, which we hope you do, then, um, then those certificates, you know, your, your test armour, your certificate of completion and all that sort of, your, your, your qualification. Um, those sorts of things, they will want to see evidence of that too. So that's with another university. So there's another reason to have your documentation stored safely, keep it on record, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm coming back to always the keep in touch and the people to keep in touch with is me as course convener, course coordinator, um, our PD of STEM um, team, uh, headed by Rosie, uh, Shane, we've got Lee, we've got a whole bunch of people in the background, but it's a coordinated effort. The student centre, obviously, we've got our academic program um, director, David, we have Wayne Hawkins, you know, um, uh, as the director of curriculum now. So we've got a whole lot of people um, who are working with you and your unit conveners. Remember, they're the first port of call for anything with your specific units. And all of this other support structure, and this is just the timely reminder um, about. Um, you know, the study skills in particular, um, inclusion and engagement especially, you know, if, if the wheels do fall off the bandwagon for health reasons um, and otherwise, inclusion and engagement are critical to that. The free medical uh, counselling services, this is the last year for you when things like this are free. So soak it up because really, or subsidised or free, free health services, you never get that again um, unless you work in defence and then they get you to pay it back anyway. But um, the other things, like all the subsidised um, sport clubs and all the other clubs and associations, that sort of thing helps to bring balance to your final year here. You can reconnect with people and things like that and actually enjoy that homeward run um, that we are all on. The various Moodle sites that we have, remember to use while those. While we yeah? on the subject of clubs. And oh, yeah, 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 professional associations. Sorry, I just community wanted to... Community of practice, remember Yeah, that. community of practice. And I just wanted to say mm -hmm. a couple of words just... Um, Following on from what um, Kathy was saying about um, take it while it's free, <laughs> so I, ju I just wanted to promote the Australian College of Educators. The Australian College of Educators is the peak um, professional association for educators across all sectors. Um, after we finish here, I'll put their website up there. Um, they have um, different mem like most professional associations, they have different membership rates, and so the membership rate for people who are either um, pre-service teachers or early career educators is cheaper than the full rate. Mm -hmm. And so I'd really strongly encourage you to become members of the Australian College of Educators and to do it sooner rather than, you know, wait for a couple of years into your career. Mm -hmm. That's yep, thanks. All right, thank you. Um, no, Moodle sites, right. As you know, there are lots of Moodle sites that you're in, um, but the old teacher education one, very, very important. There's the ongoing support for the, the literacy and numeracy support, so should you, just to help prepare you when you're ready, if you want to do that, for the land type testing. And remember this academic support, particularly because it is this homeward run that we're on. Um, so yeah, remember those. And I haven't put the MASH centre on there, and I possibly should. Um, and again, yeah, PEO, um, office. I'm not too sure how they're going to actually nourish and energise you. I don't know why I put them on that bit, but anyway. Um, the, but they are, because most of you will be doing your capstone prac unit, placement unit this semester um, or next semester if it's CPP3. So with that in mind, the professional experience office staff are your BFF, um, BFFs, Cecilia and Anne, the, um, your be very best friends. So uh, you know you need to give them information if there's issues about where you're being placed. Uh, conflict of interest, all those sorts of things, as well as you know the uploading of your reports at the end. 
and stuff like that. The intervention and support team in the faculty, headed by Chris Morrissey this year, um, and there's uh, Lynn Walker and um, Duncan Driver, North Side, South Side coordinators. So, and I help in the background. So, you know, with uh, Chris being the um, placement coordinator and the intervention and support person too. So, if you have issues on PRAC um, for any reason, contact in the PE office first, who then triage situations and pass it on to Chris and the team. So, remember all those sorts of things early. Um, um, Okay, and the various other things which I've covered already, I think. So I guess, yeah, this is coming back to the centre. This is where, you know, we are a community of practice, you with each other, um, the university, the faculty, the staff, the support staff. There are professional associations which also form communities of practice for you too. There's lots of stuff, there's lots of um, support here for you as you make that homeward run. So please keep in touch with us. Join the alumni when you graduate as well to really keep in touch. But, um, but do remember to um, yeah, make contact with unit conveners, course, meet, course coordinator, staff as you need things. Um, we can help you find information if you need that sort of support, all sorts of stuff. And uh, thanks for coming and thanks for enduring any bumps along the way in your journey if you've endured that. Um, and hopefully uh, we've helped you go through those things and navigate bits and pieces on your journey. Um, and also, it's a good opportunity because this, this is the first time we've actually run a session like this. Um, we always focus on the beginning of the journey. I think it's time that we do really continue focusing on the end as well and anything in between. Do them all along to support you along the way. Um, so if there is some feedback that you'd like to give us about the content or process for, the, for this session, um, but how we might improve what we're doing to support you along your way, we'd like to hear from that, hear from you. Uh, anything from sending me an email, the STEM office, you can write it on a piece of paper, um, whatever, any way you like, that would be great. So do we have any questions? Uh, I have a, a yep. interesting question. How mm -hmm. do we actually apply for jobs? Do we just approach schools with resumes? That's so not a silly question at all, well, that's a great question. Like, you have to register with the Department of Education and Training to be able to work in a government school. You have to be a registered teacher to start off with. Yeah. To approach a school, you would need to be registered with, say in the ACT, TQI, because they will want that first. Yeah. Uh, and so then... Is that not the same as the Department of Education? No, no, they're separate bodies. Yep, well. yep, um, yep. And then do they just issue you with a list? That's a very good question and not one I can answer. <laughs> Can I just make a comment sure. here? Because this is a question that came up last time, obviously. The university takes very seriously the employability of its graduates. This is not just ex you know, relating to education, of course. So what we really want is all of our graduates to be in terrific jobs the day after they graduate. That's, that's our aim. However, we are not an employing authority. Um, and, and in the same sense as the registering authority, TQI, um, change their processes from time to time, different employing authorities change their processes from time to time. Um, we were talking this morning about the fact that in days gone by, the Education and Training Directorate, that's an employing mm, authority, right. actually used to come on campus yeah. and do interviews and that sort of thing here. Well, that doesn't yeah. happen anymore. Yeah. Um, but what we will do is we'll make sure that there's a link mm. anyway to, we'll put a link on the All Teacher mm. Education website to, to some of those employing authorities. So the Education and Training Directorate is one, Catholic Schools Office is another one, and then each independent school, being independent, has its own processes for that. Um, so really, we can't advise you, you know, ab about their processes, but as Cathy's saying, step one is get registered as a teacher because that's, because as I said, the Teacher Quality Institute is, a, is an independent um, established by the ACT Constitution. So it's a completely separate authority. It answers to the same minister as the directorate does, but it's an independent authority and its job is to register teachers. Um, so whether you're applying for a job at Canberra Grammar School or um, the Blue Gum School or Corwell High School, um, the first step will be you have to be registered as a teacher. Um, so that's sort of the process is graduate, or course complete, mm. get registered, and, and we'll provide links for you so that you can see what those processes are. Yeah. Yeah. An excellent question, actually. Yeah, it's a very good question. Um, and the other thing... Uh, backing on employability is that, uh, or how to apply for jobs, is don't, you don't need to limit yourself to classroom teaching. 
for schools, school-based education. Um, you know, your scope is very broad. We, um, you've learned here how to design learning programs, how to understand young people and how they learn. Um, all of those in, and act as a professional in the field. So you've learnt lots of skill sets and many, many, many others. Um, lots of government organisations, so regular government agencies like um, the Department of Health, um, Commonwealth and local governments all have education offices as well. So you can go into the realm of adult learning too. Um, and also other agency or organisations like um, Questacon, the Arboretum, the War Memorial, um, Parliament House, they all have education offices. Um, all of those organisations, um, all sorts of things. So there are lots of places for you to find work uh, that aren't necessarily in a school-based system. And there are lots of alternative education environments as well. There's hospital schools as well, Ju um, schools in juvenile and justice centres, in detention centres and the Defence Force. So there's a lot of scope for people with an education degree, a teaching degree. Again, being, qual being accredited first, so go and get your registration or registered first, that helps. That, that's not a requirement for those other jobs, but it's going to add weight to your application, I think, and leave your scope open. So the, the fantastic thing, especially in a secondary education degree, is you have a lot of scope um, to do that. And I'd also recommend if you do want to get into adult learning, you can do a higher ed, you can do a grad cert in um, adult education here, but you can also do um, cert for in training and assessment which is also another key qualification. You can do that. Um, we don't offer that here anymore, but externally. Um, and that's what a lot of government organisations will want as well when they want tailored training package programs for their staff.